Hello and welcome to Holy Impact, a HolyImpactMinistries.com production. I'm Pastor Scott Villane. God bless you and thank you for sharing your time with us here today. Our topical study today is the truth about Yom Terah, also known as Rosh Hashanah. Terah means shouting, a blast. We are to rest, to make a loud noise to Yahweh. Some will wrongly proclaim that this is the beginning of a new year, also known as Tishri 1. We'll cover that as we progress here today. The truth is that God's months were never given names. They were always referred to by God as numbers, 1 through 12. The names of the months written in the Talmud were taken from the Babylonians. Israel was taken captive by the Babylonians and made to serve them under bondage for 70 years. And many of the traditions and the rituals of the Babylonians are still taught in today's Jewish traditions and their rituals and even their myths. This is readily admitted in the Talmud itself. The Babylonians uh, celebrated what was known as Akitu. It was also known as the New Year. And they celebrated this Akitu, or this New Year's, twice a year. The true Hebrew New Year is on the first day of the first month, as shown in Exodus 12, 2. Exodus 12, 2, it says, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Sukkot, just two weeks after Yom Terah, is called the going out of the year, or the turn of the year in Exodus 23.16. The term Rosh Hashanah is Babylonian, not Hebrew. Rosh Hashanah means head of the year. Nowhere does the Torah say that Yom Terah, which is also known as Rosh Hashanah, is the beginning of a sabbatical year. We're told in Exodus 12.1 that the beginning of the months is the first month of the year, and it falls on the first month, also known as Nisan 1. Exodus 12.1 says this, And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, every man a lamb, according to their father's house, a lamb for each household. This event was in preparation for the Passover, which is the first of God's feast days, which occurs in the first month, also known as Nisan. Yom Turah begins on the first of the seventh month, also known as its Babylonian name of Tishri. And it begins a ten-day period known as the Days of Awe, or Yamin Nureim, leading up to Yom Kippur, also known as the Day of Atonement. It is a call to Teshiva, or repentance, which is a call to turn back to the commandments of Yahweh. It is to be a time of heart-searching and self-examination and getting back to the things of God and making sure that we're not becoming assimilated to the things of this world. It has also become known for a time to remember the coming of the Messiah because of the references to blowing of the trumpet and to the return of Yeshua's second coming in 1 Thessalonians 4.16. First Thessalonians 4:16 For the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven and with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord This again is at the seventh trump, as told by our Messiah in Matthew 24, 29.
Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Once again, this will happen after the tribulation of those days. Notice again the sounding of the trumpet in verses 24 31. We have to be very careful when studying the Word of God so that we know and understand that the Israelites, along with the Jewish people, after being in bondage uh, in Babylon for 70 years, were deep into the traditions and the rituals and the myths of the Babylonians. Much like modern-day Christianity is under the pagan influences of Babylonian still today because of the teachings of Catholicism. Zvi Khan, The Rise of the Karit Sect, New York, 1937, pages 98 through 101, says this. Many of the earliest known rabbis, such as Hillel I, were born and educated in Babylonia. Indeed, Babylonia remained the heartland of rabbinical Judaism until the fall of the Gaonate in the 11th century CE. The Babylonian Talmud abounds with influences of Babylonian paganism. Indeed, paganism deities even appear in the Talmud recycled as Jewish angels and demons. Remember, we are not commanded to obey or follow the man-made Talmud anywhere in the scriptures. When looking at the teachings of the Talmud, we must always be aware that the Talmud was written by men, many who were still practicing and teaching their own man-made laws and traditions, doing exactly what our Messiah warned us against when he said this in Matthew 15, 6. Matthew 15, 6. So, for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God, you hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. The Babylonians celebrated Akitu, which was known as New Year's twice a year. Now this was never a practice commanded by God in the word of God. Some say that it's commanded to sound the trumpet to announce the coming jubilee, and that this proves that it's the new year. But this does not mean that the jubilee year starts on Yom Turah. It simply means to sound the trumpet for the up-and-coming year of jubilee, which is about six months away. It occurs every 49th year. We are told that the shofar is to be passed through the land before the coming jubilee. This gives them six months to pass the chauffeur around the land so that everyone can sound it before the jubilee arrives. It does not mean that the new year begins on the first of the seventh month. What sense does that make? Here's the truth about what the scriptures say about Yom Terah. Let's take a look at Leviticus 23.23. Leviticus 23, 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the, on the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. We can also look to Numbers 29, and we can see very clearly that it says, And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have an holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. It is the day of blowing the trumpets unto you. It is to be a high Sabbath day, when no work is to be done. It is to be a remembrance 
of who we are in relationship to the Father, and a precursor to Yom Kippur, which is also known as the Day of Atonement, which is ten days later. It's a time to contemplate the return of our Messiah, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, and the promise of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that we are all heirs of, as written in Galatians 3.28-29. through 29. Let's take a look at Galatians 3.28. Galatians 3.28, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offsprings, heirs according to the promise. The promise of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob live on through us. We who have been grafted into the olive tree, we who are all one in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I hope and I pray that this teaching has been a blessing to you and remember to test everything. I'm Pastor Scott Belane with HolyImpactMinistries.com. God bless you. Thank you for sharing your time with us here today. And Shalom.